Hello my friends, I'm Rich Larson and I'm the RC Tire Guy. Today I'll be breaking down my full gear selection for hard enduro. I get a lot of questions on what I wear while riding. I've tested quite a few different gear components and although my setup is somewhat simple, I'll give you guys the full rundown. So let's get right into it with what gear I run. Now you guys may have noticed I recently changed to a completely new brand. They're called Phase Moto. I want to break down why I made this switch. FaZe is a smaller company, really just starting out trying to make their name in off-road and motocross. These smaller companies have always intrigued me. I love an opportunity to grow with a company. So that's what made me at least test the gear. Now, the other huge piece of why I made the switch has everything to do with quality. Recently, gear brands have gone towards the extremely thin and lightweight moto gear. Now, as you can see, their jerseys are thin. I love the way they feel. Although the form-fitting stuff looks awesome, I really struggle with the quality specifically pertaining to the pants. These lightweight pants have trouble handling hard and durable style of riding. Most of what I ride is mountainous tight trails covered in trees and brush. The truth is, with my previous gear brands, I was going through at least one pair of pants a month, maybe more. The weak point was always the knee. As soon as I'd catch it on brush or a tree, it would rip. As you can see, the Phase Moto Gear has thicker, high quality fabric around the knee. So far, I haven't ripped any of my new sets. Now I do wanna mention, in all the gear I wear, boots, helmet, protection, etc., Phase is the only brand I'm supported by, so you can take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. That being said, I can almost guarantee if you're looking for high quality, long lasting gear, you won't be disappointed. I'd also say if you did rip a set of Phase Moto gear, sending them a message on Instagram, Facebook, or email, you'd be talking to the owner. I don't know of many other companies where you would experience that. Moving on, let's talk what I probably get more questions on than anything pertaining to gear. Do I wear knee braces or not? There's so much debate in recent years on whether or not knee braces help or hurt you. Some of this debate surrounds whether or not they hinder your movement or if they protect your knees at all. You can always find someone who had knee braces on and still blew out their ACL. This is the story with braces in general. There's doctors that have said if you didn't have that neck brace on, you'd probably be paralyzed. To me, this is all somewhat anecdotal. I'm sure most companies who have made these braces have tested them more than I have. So to an extent, I'm sure it does work. I personally don't wear a neck brace because I find them uncomfortable, although I do wear knee braces. The theory behind any brace is saving the joint to break the bone. With a knee brace, the contact point would be your femur or your tib and fib. Those are easier to fix than a knee reconstruction. That being said, I have switched back and forth from braces to pads and back to braces. Pads are definitely less bulky, although I don't feel like my movement is really hindered by braces. Before and after the fact, I've ran Mobius knee braces for years, and I will probably continue to do that. They're low profile, comfortable, and again, I think my ability to move is pretty good. Surprisingly, I also saw Jet Lawrence using the same Mobius X8 knee brace, which I will say I was somewhat pumped about. I think something I never see spoken about in this knee brace debate is your ability to strengthen your own knees to help protect you from injury. Doing exercises off the bike is said to be the best way to protect yourself from a knee injury. Maybe you guys have heard of him, but check out the knees over toes guy. He has some incredible info on bulletproofing your knees, and since knee problems are common in moto, I'd check him out. I think the double protection of strong knees and braces is the best approach. On top of the Mobius knee brace, I also use the Mobius wrist brace. In 2016, I crashed at a local enduro cross going over the bars. Thinking I sprained my wrist, I raced the entire 2016 enduro cross season with nagging wrist pain. After the season, I went to the doctor and found out my scaphoid was broken right down the middle. Because I waited so long, the doctor said they could do a bone graft and a pin and it still might not heal. I opted to leave it, so my wrist is now permanently broken. That's why I wear the Mobius brace. 
These Mobius wrist brace keep me confident in not overextending one way or the other. I have about 85% to 90% of complete movement in my wrist, and honestly, I don't think it affects me that much. The brace really just keeps me from jamming it, which is incredibly painful. Moving on to boots, I've switched between quite a few different brands, Alpenstars, Garnet, Seedies. I've landed on Seedies being my favorite. The biggest reason they are my go-to boots is the movement in the ankle. Even with new boots, I have a maximization of movement, allowing me to drop my heels while on the balls of my feet. This is extremely important to me. Now, within the brand, I've tested quite a few different models, from the Atoho SRS, the Crossfire 3 SRS, the X Power, and X3 Enduro. I think I like the comfort of the SRS boot more than anything, but I like the sewn-on sole of the X3 and TA models. The sewn-on sole lasts a little bit longer. Now, one thing I will say I do with the sewn-on sole is I take the metal toe plate off of the front. The reason for this is metal on rocks in hardened girl situations doesn't equal traction. I've slipped quite a few times when dabbing and taking that metal toe off does help. The metal doesn't really do anything as far as protection, being that's not where your toe is, but it does help the sole stay together longer. That being said, the sewn on sole without the metal toe still lasts longer than the bolt on. Really, I like all the CDs, and I'm sure I'll continue to test different models and different brands. On top of that, we have to talk helmets. I run the Suwami MX Speed helmet. Suwami helmets were always popular in MXGP. Few knew that they make MX helmets as well. One of my biggest reasons for choosing Suwami is the lightweight characteristics, weighing in at 2.6 pounds. Being I'll wear a helmet for six to eight hours when teaching groups, lightweight is a huge factor. The MX Speed also has safety features like MIPS, and they look awesome. With the helmet, I also run Phase Moto goggles to match my gear. Now, finally, a few added gear pieces. I run the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Knee High Socks. These are insanely inexpensive, and the quality is just as good as any other brand that I've tested. I really like knee highs for my knee braces. I also use the Phase Moto strapless gloves. I prefer strapless gloves, again, because I wear a wrist brace and the strap tends to get in the way. For Hard Enduro, I like the US Wii Hydration Pack. This is the Outlander 3 liter. It's lightweight, comfortable, and big enough to hold a few tools, zip ties, my phone for training rides. Again, I'm pretty basic. I don't wear a lot of extra stuff, but I do have my reasons for what I use. I hope this video sheds a little light on my gear preferences, and I hope you're enjoying the videos. If you are, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, as well as follow us on Instagram at IRCMoto, my personal Instagram page at richlarson 511 and until next time, keep shredding.